This video is brought to you by SoundMoneyCampaign.com. Be part of the solution. Visit SoundMoneyCampaign.com today. Don't miss your chance to join me and 14 of the most influential thought leaders in the world of alternative media as we discuss the elevated threat level to your liberty and what you can do about it at the Liberty Mastermind Symposium in Las Vegas, February 21st and 22nd. Go to libertymastermind.us to register. Hey everyone, this is Elijah Johnson with financeandliberty.com and back with us today is John from brotherjohnf.com, the Silver for the People blog and also thebitcoinchannel.com. John, thank you so much for joining us today. It's great to be back on, Elijah. All right, so Bitcoin recently surpassed $1,000. Why do you think Bitcoin is going up so quickly, so fast? Well, it's a distrust of sovereign currencies, which can be printed at will, and uh, the market cap of the cryptocurrencies I've covered on my videos is... Um, it's still roughly $12 billion or something. It's up by $2 billion in the last few days. But it's still just a tiny pittance, and people are beginning to investigate the cryptocurrencies and whether or not they can actually function. More and more people are hearing about it, and uh, more money is flowing into it. It has a lot to do with the uh, testimony at the Senate hearing, where if you read between the lines – uh, you could see that they pretty much don't have any regulatory power over Bitcoin itself. They have regulatory power over dollar transactions, but uh, the Bitcoin's traded in terms of all currencies and uh, other cr cryptocurrencies. So uh, that, I think, uh, added a big boost. And uh, then the breakout above the old high uh, around 266 uh, really added a lot of impetus as well. I know just a couple of years ago, Bitcoin was trading for just a couple cents. This just seems like the tulip mania all over again to me. It just seems like a huge, huge bubble. But on one of your recent videos on your Bitcoin channel, you stated that this, in your opinion, is not a bubble. Am I right about that? Right. Well, I mean, it, how do you define a bubble? There's a lot of elements to what constitutes a bubble. I think one of the key elements is going to be people who are investing in something because they think they're going to sell it to someone else at a higher price. In other words, they don't really have any belief in the value of it. If you think about the tulip mania that occurred in Holland, uh, that type of value for tulip bulbs is ridiculous. Uh, tulip bulbs don't have really any of the qualities of money, whereas Bitcoin has virtually all the qualities of money except the one as uh, being a store of value, that one is open to debate. But all the other qualities of money Bitcoin has. So I think that people are buying it because they see its value. And of course, we had a recent transaction that occurred with no fees. It was a $147 million transaction. We don't know who sent to who. But we do know that $147 million worth of Bitcoins were sent from one location to another, and the transaction fee on that was zero. You mentioned that a lot of people see the value in Bitcoin, but aren't a lot of the people who are trading Bitcoin, do they even understand how Bitcoin works? Even I'm not 100% sure on all the math behind it. Couldn't a lot of people who are trading it just be going for the greater fool theory? There could be a large number of people who are involved in it because... They see it going up in price and, and don't really understand it. But I think that as I've covered for a number of years actually on my Bitcoin channel YouTube channel and my blog, thebitcoinchannel.com, covered the fact that this is a unique idea. It's actually not a thing as much as it is an idea. And the idea is that cryptography creates the ability to have a virtual currency and that virtual currency uh, that that possibility has always been around there have been a, a number of attempts at it but the bitcoin is the first decentralized cryptocurrency and what that means is that there is no issuing entity there's no backing of it 
it has a limited number and there'll never be more. And uh, it's an independent self-sustaining system that uh, so far hasn't been broken. I've said for the longest time, uh, a lot of the critics have said, well, it's going to collapse and it may well collapse. But uh, so far it hasn't. The vote of confidence in it has been the price and that's still skyrocketing. Can you explain a little bit more on how Bitcoins actually work and how they're made? The way that it works is that there are miners and what they're doing is they're doing complex mathematical calculations to try to solve a mathematical problem. When the mathematical problem is solved, then they're awarded with a certain number of Bitcoins. There can only be 21 million Bitcoins ever in existence. We're a little past half that now. And so that's how Bitcoins are, quote unquote, discovered. Uh, everyone who's running a miner and mining pools are competing against each other to solve these mathematical problems. Uh, you have to understand that encryption creates the ability to have an unsolvable problem as far as uh, guessing at it unless you do enough uh, hard uh, attempts at uh, guessing the answer. That's the way it works, and uh, that's the basis behind cryptography. So the system is closed in the sense that it can't be broken into. Um, it has a limited number. And uh, so what you're actually purchasing if you buy a Bitcoin is you're purchasing confidence in the ability of the system to maintain what it has done so far, which is allow people to send large amounts of Bitcoins, which can represent money anywhere in the world at any time. And of course, as I pointed out for the longest time, that it's very important that this has the ability to defeat capital controls because there's no way that governments can control value that's sent from one computer to another. Just as governments can't control BitTorrent, uh, there are plenty of laws about copyright. There are uh, We had the takedown of uh, Mega Upload, and we've had a lot of stuff regarding copyright. But again, BitTorrent continues to exist because it's a peer-to-peer -peer network where people are simply sharing files. Those files may be copywritten files. They might not be copywritten files, but it's decentralized, so it can't be shut down. That's a really interesting point, and I know that you know Bitcoin is getting talked about a lot in the mainstream media. Do you see that Bitcoin, you mentioned that it can could be a threat to capital controls, but do you see it possibly even replacing currencies eventually? How do you see that um, pl all playing out? Well, theoretically, it's possible. I would expect that to be quite a stretch at this point, but clearly the powers that be are very threatened by it. I've covered the what I call FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, which has pretty much been the story that has gone on in the mainstream media. So Bitcoin has had a series of runs that I've covered Basically, tenfold moves, three cents to 30 cents, 30 cents to three dollars, three dollars to 30 dollars, 30 dollars to nearly 300 dollars. And now I believe we're going 300 to nearly 3,000. So every time Bitcoin makes a type of parabolic spike in that bull market, then the mainstream media comes rushing in saying that it's a bubble. But it really is just a bull market. And it gets ahead of itself like any bull market. You have to remember this is truly a free market. We don't have free markets anymore in the world. We have the stock market, which is a fake market, and it's corrupted by the DTCC and fake shares. We have the bond markets of the world, which are fake markets. They're bought and sold pretty much by the banks and the central banks. And we have manipulation of the gold and silver markets by the central banks of the world who are trying to suppress the price of gold and silver because they're competing currencies to their fiat currencies. So Bitcoin is different because it truly is a free market. Uh, you can't short sell the Bitcoin. There are no Bitcoin derivatives currently. There may be in the future, but right now the price is not controlled by derivatives and derivatives are what 
give the central banks the ability to suppress the precious metals. So this is a real market. It's a free market. It's a true market. And for that reason, governments really hate it. Right. I mean, it seems like they can't regulate it. Ben Bernanke wrote in a letter to the Senate Homeland Security and Government Affairs Committee that, quote, although the Federal Reserve generally monitors developments in virtual currencies and other payment system innovations, it does not necessarily have the authority to directly supervise or regulate these innovations or the entities that provide them to the market. And a lot of people are also reporting that he said in that letter that Bitcoin holds promise. What is your perspective on Ben Bernanke seemingly being in support of Bitcoin? Well, Bernanke's on his way out, so he's probably hedging his bets. But uh, he's correct in the fact that they have no uh, regulatory authority over it. If you look into what was said at the Senate testimony and you look into FinCEN and their charter and what they are involved with regulating, they are regulators of money laundering. That's what they're tasked with. And Bitcoin is not money. Money, by definition, at least by their legal definitions, certainly FinCEN as one, is that it is a currency that's issued by sovereign governments. The Bitcoin is not issued by any government. So it's not a currency and it's not money. And for that reason, government agencies like FinCEN and the Treasury, the extent of their regulatory authority is over the dollars that flow into Bitcoin. So you've seen a lot of stories about prosecution of uh, – there was Mt. Gox, which is the major exchange, although there are others coming online every day. But the issue is how dollars flow in to the Bitcoin, how euros flow into the Bitcoin, how rubles – and now, of course, the Chinese are getting very, very involved with it. How these sovereign currencies, that is the basis of the government's regulation. But as I said in the past on a number of videos, if you're using the Bitcoin to transact with other goods and services or you're using the Bitcoin to buy other cryptocurrencies or you're just buying and selling Bitcoins for anything that's not money, there is no government authority over that. Now, there could be. And I think that was hinted at in the Senate hearings that maybe the Senate needs to act. But as of yet, they haven't acted. So there is no law that governs it. The only laws that govern Bitcoin are the laws that govern dollars going into Bitcoin, the know your customer limitations, the anti-money laundering laws, and, and things like that. Most of the businesses that are involved in Bitcoin, especially Coinbase and the others where you can actually buy Bitcoins with your dollars, are already compliant with those rules, which uh, mean that uh, you know you have your 10,000 t- transaction rules and things like that that the government issues. But again, that's only in regards to regulation of Bitcoin as it interfaces with sovereign currencies. That's a really interesting point. And I wanted to move our focus now to the precious metal markets. Now, while we've seen Bitcoin just go literally parabolic, we've seen just the precious metals just keep going down. Silver is actually, again, below $20. What is your perspective on the precious metals, you know, not doing anything right now? Well, it's an indication of the power of the banks and the government in using derivatives to manipulate prices. We know that the vast majority of the trading in silver, which is the one that I concentrate on in my blog, Silver for the People, on my YouTube channel, silver is the most manipulated uh, market in the history of the world. And 99.9% of the transactions that go on in the silver market are fake silver. They aren't people who own silver. If you think about it, The banks, who aren't miners and for the most part don't have any stockpiles of it, are selling hundreds and hundreds of millions of ounces of silver every day. We see volume spikes. We just saw a volume spike recently that came in after silver had rallied a little bit through 20, and there were 300 million ounces of silver, paper silver, dropped on the market 
Now, that's nearly half of what's mined in the entire world in an entire year. So the reason that silver and gold are so much different than the Bitcoin is that the price of those two are determined primarily by derivatives. And the Bitcoin can't be – the price can't be determined by derivatives. There are no derivatives on it. So the only way to sell a Bitcoin is if you have a Bitcoin. And uh, that's the big difference. I think that silver probably would look something like the Bitcoin market if it were a free market. Uh, the 50 million ounces of silver eagles that are purchased every year at current prices, that's what um, – a billion dollars or something. So just a tiny amount of money. The, the market cap of the cryptocurrencies went up by twice that just in the last couple of days. So – the big difference is is government can't manipulate it, and anything that government can't manipulate is uh, going to have value, whereas something that government can manipulate – and again, this is just a short-term situation. Ultimately, markets are greater than governments. They've always been greater than governments, and uh, the market will out in the end, but that's what we're waiting for with silver and gold. So you're basically saying that what we've seen in Bitcoin right now – will happen in gold and silver when the governments finally lose control of the manipulation? Correct. I mean, you can look at the Bitcoin as uh, people talk about how much the price has risen, but really, I like to look at it in terms of dollars. If you look at the price of Bitcoin when it first came out and go from one cent, which just was trading at for a significant amount of time, the early adopters were trading them back and forth for a penny or two pennies, Back in 2009, if you look at that in terms of devaluation of the dollar, then you could turn around and say at $1,000 of Bitcoin, the dollar has lost 99.999% of its value against the Bitcoin. So it's not the Bitcoin going up. It's the dollar going down in terms of Bitcoin, and that's because they've just printed too many dollars. So in the same way, are you making the point then when when the manipulation of gold and silver finally gives way that then the dollar will lose value in relation to gold and silver? Absolutely. The, the manipulation of the gold and silver markets is ultimately the most bullish thing that can happen because, as I've said, markets are greater than governments. And an artificially low price – this is economic law. An artificially low price will cause shortages, and uh, we've seen shortages in silver, physical silver, uh, some shortages in gold, but the governments are doing all kinds of things, pressuring India not to allow its citizens to buy gold, all kinds of crazy machinations. We saw the same thing at the dying of the London gold pool back in the 70s, and we know – that uh, the price of gold ultimately ran from 30 bucks or so all the way up to 850 bucks an ounce. And that was when that manipulation finally came to an end and things react violently in the other direction. That's the nature of markets. They can suppress the price of something, but the longer they suppress it, ultimately the higher the rise in price is going to be. All right. Well, Brother John F., it was a pleasure to speak with you today. Um, before we let you go, are there any last thoughts you'd like to leave with our viewers to wrap up? Absolutely. You need to keep your eye on the government. We're going to have a crisis again coming up at the beginning of the year. And uh, all the governments in the world are together in trying to suppress real money. And they're being challenged by silver, gold, and Bitcoin. I think those are going to be the safe havens going forward. And uh, I challenge people to go and investigate for themselves. All right. So you see the uh, crisis before the end of the year. What do you think will cause that? I don't think necessarily it's coming before the end of the year, but certainly there's another budget battle on the horizon. There's no will on either side of the aisle to do anything about the trillion dollars in budget deficits that are happening every year. Clearly, this can't go on. Something's got to give. And uh, it may be coming at the beginning of the year when they have to debate the debt ceiling again, or they may just lift it. Um, there's a lot of unknown factors. One of the big unknown factors is China and what they're going to do. So 
at some point there's going to be a crisis and at that point i think we're going to see silver and gold turn around and start to rally right i mean the situation with the u.s deficit and debt is just ridiculous and congress is making it seem a lot better actually than it is currently you know i heard that if you use generally accepted accounting principles which you know u.s businesses are legally required to report the u.s deficit according to generally accepted accounting principles would be about five times what it is reported officially absolutely they've made more promises than they can keep there's no question about that the social security lockbox doesn't exist uh, they've spent all the money uh, they've painted themselves into a corner and the only issue that remains, the whole system is already bankrupt, but the only issue is who's going to get the blame. And, of course, politicians are famous for kicking the can down the road to the next guy's watch. We have a lot of them that have escaped. It looks like Bernanke's going to escape. And uh, I thought Bernanke was going to be the fall guy for Greenspan, but he's managed to go through his term, and now Yellen's going to be in there. So it's going to happen on someone's watch, and... All of them are trying to make sure it doesn't happen on their watch, but it's coming soon. Things are coming to a head, and it can't go on much longer. All right. Well, Brother John F., can you remind our viewers where they can find you? They can find my silver blog at brotherjohnf.com, and the bitcoinchannel.com is my Bitcoin blog, and you can find both of those on YouTube as well. Once again, John, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks again, Elijah. Go to financeandliberty.com and subscribe for free for more interviews and financial insight.